Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening to all. Uh, first, I would like to start off by introducing myself. I am Malik Bafarin, a, a student at UTM University and the treasurer uh, of ISS Yemen, the committee, uh, the student, uh, uh, ISS Yemen at UTM University. And I would like to thank you all for participating in this virtual workshop. Uh, tonight, as you all know, we are blessed to welcome Dr. Young, uh, a very special guest from Malaysia. Uh, he is a doctor at UTM University in the School of Electrical, uh, and he is the CEO of DF Automation. And uh, he is an expert in the entrepreneur uh, with over 20 years experience. Tonight, he will be sharing his expert opinion in the entrepreneur. Uh, with that, uh, I ask you all to give your full attention to the doctor and if you have any question, feel free to uh, raise your hand uh, and then we will uh, unmute you to, to ask your question. Uh, without further ado, uh, hi Dr. Young and welcome. So you can begin. Hi, thanks Malik. Good evening everyone. It's a great honor to be here to give this talk. and. Um, I've been teaching Malik for the last one semester like, and Malik have been trying to reach me for this uh, session. And um, it's, it's always a pleasure uh, to share with all the people like you guys and so on because we want to create a big ecosystem. Uh, before I start, I just want to give a little bit introduction myself. I've been lecturer at UTM, UC Tanner in Malaysia for the last uh, 20 years. And I like to build stuff, innovate and so on. And I start to venture to entrepreneur actually for the last 10 years. Like. And for the last 10 years, I founded uh, more than 10 companies. Some work, some doesn't work. And today, I'm going to share a little bit with you uh, those that actually survive and uh, what is happening next and going on. And also, I'd like to know also before I, because some of the names there is still very familiar. Before I start, can everyone just say hi so that I know that I'm talking to uh, people rather than just to uh, Zoom. <laughs> if, if you can just say hi at the chat board, that would be brilliant. Hi. Okay, great. Uh, excellent. So the next question I'm going to ask is just a quick one. Where are you from? I mean, right now you're in Malaysia or in Yemen or in any country. Can you just write the location that you are in now? Some from Yemen, from Egypt, from Jordan, some from Iraq. So this is really an international. Oh, some of you went back home, yeah. Some of you from KL, India. Okay, excellent, good. And one last question. If any of you joined my class before, if you can just write class, then I know that uh, you were in my class in the past. If you can just write class, only one. Okay, I think there are about maybe one or two percent are you joining my class. Excellent. So I roughly get the idea maybe 10% of 5% of you are from my class. So I try not to repeat too many things because um, then the session will be uh, boring for you guys. Uh, let's, I will share my slide now. Hold on, yeah. Malik, you can see the slide? Yes, doctor. Okay. Uh, so the slide going to be maybe 45 minutes to one hour session. Along the way, if you have any question, you can just uh, write the chat there. I may not be able to see, so Malik can actually uh, stop me and then uh, ask the question. Or Malik can actually unmute uh, some of you to ask me questions. You can just interrupt me anytime. Okay. But throughout the session, I'm going to stop maybe one or two times just to have some interaction and some exercise so that uh, you're aware of what we are doing now. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Um, so I was given the topic by Malik, how to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, 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 in fact, each offer can be an entrepreneur easily. Like you just can open a company, sell stuff, and that's it. Like. But I think how to be an entrepreneur, but then you can sustain yourself. I think this is a very, very important question. Uh, I will share a little bit why I start my business, how I survive some of the challenges and so on. I think this could be very interesting as well, like in my opinion. Uh, so again, uh, I will always give a talk about university entrepreneurship mindset. I believe that most of you are still in the university. 
and I would like to bring that forward. Uh, is that really something that easy for you to do business or not? So my first question is really university research and entrepreneurship, is it a match in heaven? Uh, it doesn't have to be research. It can be an assignment. It can be anything. So um, yeah, this one I'd like to have a quick uh, so-called question. Is university research or assignment and entrepreneurship, is it a match in heaven? If you can say yes or no, just run on the chat group. Okay, I can't actually see from here. Let me stop the share first and I see. Okay, so it's not. So I repeat again. Eh? I repeat again the question. Do you think that entrepreneurship in university is a match in heaven or is it not? If you say it's a perfect uh, scenario or situation for you to do a business, you can say yes. Otherwise, you say no. Can you reply to the chat? Okay, some say, Fidel say yes, Bara say no, Ama say yes, no, Ibrahim say yes, Asalan say yes. So I repeat my question because this is a very important question for you to answer before we go deep into my topic. Then you will benefit more. Kali say no, Abdul Rahman say yes. So let's wait for another two or three more. Yes, for some fields only. Okay. <laughs> yes. Some more, one or two more. Okay, let me start back again. Uh, so I put this back here, but if you ask most of the lecturer or student, normally they say it's very tough to do a business when you are in university. Reason being is if you are four years are doing your degree, you have so many subjects, so you actually don't have the time to do entrepreneurship. And as a for lecturer, actually our profession is actually to teach. Again, uh, to do business is not something that we we are really comfortable with because uh, as a lecturer, we just teach. But in business, you need to have a lot of uh, different kind of skill. So most of the time, this question is really tough. It's not really a match in the heaven, okay? So I'll go through to my slide. This is my contact. I will talk a little bit about introduction, then academic to entrepreneurship mindset, how I change my mindset from academic to, uh, to entrepreneur. I will give a bit of how to do pitching, some case study and a bit of a conclusion. So this is me, uh, I right now I'm also a professor at UTM. I got my PhD from Imperial College. I did my uh, master and bachelor from UTM. My activities really, my research, uh, interests are in robotics, embedded system, entrepreneurship. I have founded a few companies like I mentioned early on. I've man I manage a community of about 5 million ringgit uh, research fund, published more than 70 publications and a few IP. So this is what I did and also, I mean, if you are the student, you're also part of the student. Uh, during your coursework, you need to do a lot of uh, assignment, you need to do a lot of uh, syllabus and all this is actually a very valuable innovation, yeah? And of course, during the final project, you need to do some project and some assignment. Uh, so this is where I start to tell my student and also student in, 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 I mean, during your final year project, treat your final project as a potential product to be commercialized rather than just to fulfill the requirement of an academic. Because uh, you're going to spend one year for the project, why not you just try to uh, push into entrepreneurship? Then, of course, you do some uh, under and post credit project for some competition for research. And this is some of it, 2000 ringgit first prize we won at the prize competition. This is a pitching competition on the top right. Then also this is N9. And uh, as a lecture, so I did a lot of sharing talk just like today for public. Again, uh, just to touch a little bit on entrepreneurship, networking is very, very important. So again, this actually opened up another possibility. So from the academy, like I mentioned, even as a lecturer and also as a student like yourself, you actually involve in a lot of uh, learning, hands-on, making assignment and product. And this is where the innovation come along. This is one of the example of uh, innovation assignment project for my class, Embedded System. And basically they come up with some uh, IoT, smart city kind of uh, prototype. And they all done this in actually in less than six week time. So from there, we push a little bit forward, then we join all kinds of a competition. The middle one is uh, Microsoft Imaging Cup. You can imagine myself is from Electrical. Um, 
most of my students they are mentor are from uh, mechatronic student and and we learn actually how to do programming on microsoft imaging card and so on so there is no boundary at this time that if you are in mechanical you cannot do this if you are in computer science you cannot do that basically all things can be done can be learned easily and and again i like to do uh, competition because this is where the innovation come and competition also try to really help you to uh, validate your idea validate your MEPs. so then we have also represent Malaysia in iCRED this is to Korea uh, and uh, the bottom left one if you could see there is a small little circle this is called Feebot right now we are selling to Malaysia Singapore and Thailand and the top middle one is a compact rehab robot now we sold to uh, UK we sold to India as well. So again, Robocon, I used to be in Robocon as a team leader and team instructor for six, seven years. And this is all help you to get some fundamental technical skill, innovation, leadership and management. And yeah, this is my course image. I just move forward. Uh, this is in London. I won first prize, first place in pitching and won more than 100 awards. Uh, I mean, today talk is not about uh, me, how I win all this award, and so I like to share a little bit of an insight. How did I manage uh, to do this? Uh, if uh, again throughout this uh, conversation, you can just uh, ask me question. You can just ping uh, Malik. Then I will stop. Then I will just listen to the question and answer. So, um, I mean, the first thing is really about. I just go through. This is actually a two-hour talk for just how to win competition. But I will just bring a very quick. Uh, what I say, a very quick go through about this because I think this is very important. For my early 10 years, I won a lot of 100 awards actually based on a couple of simple secrets. A lot of uh, friends, peers and students ask, you know, what is your secret to win the competition? I say that there is no secret actually. <laughs> so finally, um, they keep on asking, then I say, that, okay, there are six simple secrets. And the first one is really is to register first, you know, if you want to join a competition, but you never win because simply you never register the competition. Then again, there is this mindset, determination, strategy, teamwork, and time management. So in my opinion, these are the very six important things. It's not really a secret, it basically tips. Uh. So from this, i like to share more a little bit in detail the determination. Yeah. Uh, so this is where I think it makes my, myself and my team different from other team. Number one, some of the case study, when I was back in 2002 and three, I couldn't speak English like I'm doing right now. And uh, I don't even know why it's pitching. Basically, you need to pitch in one and two minutes to the investor, to the panel, how good is your product. Pitching basically is give you a duration of time. You need to tell about your product. And I went to UK for my PhD back in 2007, came back in 2010. Then I came back and I started to do pitching. And, and I won three times for this pitching competition. You can try to imagine that someone that couldn't speak English, when I used English to do pitching, I, I mean, I managed to uh, win the first prize. Uh, so this is back in one year, I tried to join two. I won the first prize. And if you look into the second one, because they don't allow me to get the first and second, they give me the best uh, performance, then they give me a trip to Silicon Valley. So this is one example. And uh, yeah, I, I went to Facebook, I went to Google. Uh, this is another one, uh, join Robocon. I'm not trying to uh, ask you to join Robocon, and not this is not an advertisement, but I just want to share you the experience that I had with uh, Robocon, because we really want to win the competition, so we sacrifice a lot our sleep, our time, our, our luxury holiday and so on. But again, because of that, uh, we actually win. So this is a lot of a determination. How bad you want to win the competition? How bad you want your business to be successful? So this is all important concern. This is another example, Robot Partner in 2004. And this is a true story as well. Uh, this was in Mid Valley, actually, a competition called Robot Partner where we need to design a robot that can actually operate and talk to you, dance, uh, play music, and, and so on and so forth. So the robot worked perfectly well. And I, I still remember that a day before the competition, we can test the robot until 5 p.m. So we did all the testing until 5, and just 4.45, just like another 15 minutes to 5 p.m., the robot just doesn't work. You know, if if you are um, the so-called robot, uh, you are the participant, what will you do? So most of us, we may say that, okay, that's it. 
I mean, I can't do much. There are only 15 minutes. So we just say, uh, give up, then we, we move on, right? So one thing that I keep on trying to tell myself that I will try to make this work. But unfortunately, 5 o'clock, uh, the, the, the hall going to close out. So I cannot do anything. I mean, we're not supposed to do anything inside. So at, point, at that point of time, at uh, 5 o'clock, actually, I decided to uh, take the robot back to the hotel. Hopefully, that I can fix it. So another problem came along, which is the, in Mid Valley, you're not supposed to bring the robot down with the escalator because it's a public consumer area. So this brings another challenge. So finally, we keep on thinking. So we find another ways that we actually dismantle the robot. So it doesn't look like a robot anymore. So we managed to bring down go to the taxi and another problem came along, which the taxi doesn't want to bring because the taxi is a bit too small for the robot. So these are all the challenges that we had on that day and the next day is a competition. So if you try to imagine that that day, I could, I mean, we could just say that, okay, that's it. We don't want to join anymore. Uh, the next day when we join the competition, we can just tell the so-called organizers, say, hey, it was working yesterday, but not now. I mean, this is very familiar to all the student FYP out there where they have their project or assignment. They will say that it works well just last night, but today when you want to demonstration, it doesn't work. So it's the same thing as well. So finally, myself and my team said, they know we need to make it work. So somehow we managed to put into the taxi a bigger one, send to the hotel, then another problem. Then in 2004, the DAQ spoiled. So I called up the DAQ uh, supplier, say that, hey, my... Uh, the AQ spoil, can you uh, fix it? You know what they say? They just say, that, okay, I'm going to send you a replacement in one week time. Then I say, I'm sorry, I don't have one week. The competition is actually tomorrow. Uh, so can you do about it, right? So right after that, uh, they say that, okay, right now, why don't you check on the software part? Lah? So we did try to sell the software. At that time, there's no 3G and 4G. So I need to walk to the cafe. You know, we pay one ringgit for one hour kind of uh, cafe. So I downloaded the software, took a long time. I put in my uh, laptop and try out, it doesn't work out. So confirm it's a DAQ, it's burned. So at that time, it's already 8 o'clock p.m. Next day is the competition. What should I do? What should we do? You know, again, like I mentioned, determination is something that you want to push hard to win, but sometimes you have the limit because if you don't have the knowledge, technique, know-how or strategy, you probably cannot go further. So at that time, I just keep on thinking, my keep on thinking, brainstorming, and finally I just said, "Hey, I got one good, I got one idea." I went to a computer shop. If those you are uh, old like me, you know about the printer pot. Printer pot is a parallel pot. So I bought a printer pot. Then I use a Darlington chip called ULN two eight zero three. So from nine pm onward, I start to solder the board with my cable. I fix the DAQ uh, card and so on, and I start programming until the next day morning eight am. And finally, join the competition, and I won first prize. Okay, so what I'm trying to share with you is that uh, determination can bring you somewhere, but you just don't give up. Of course, certain certain times there was the limit, but again, if you don't try, you will not know. So this competition robot partner. This is a situation that day. Of course, the robot is uh, it's not so pretty at that time. But again, it's functional and more important, it won first prize. And I, I think it's 4,000 ringgit. Then I bring my dad to, uh, I think to Taiwan to have a trip. <laughs> so this is really that I want to share with you based on the story early on. So right now, I think Malik is in KL, right? Malik? Yes. I think if you want to go to Singapore, you can take flight, right? Well, of course, uh, it's kind of impossible now because the border is closed and so on. But let's say, look into a very normal scenario. Let's say from KL, go to the Singapore, you can take flight. What else that you can use to go to Singapore? Okay. Bus. You can take bus. What else? Car. Car. And okay, you can take car, you can take bus. What else? Malik, have you seen this slide before? No. Oh, no. Okay, good. Then I can ask you a question. So what else? <laughs> Maybe we can use ship, boat. Okay, excellent. So you start to think stretch because when we say from KL to Singapore, this is a very quick answer. Flight, car, bus. Okay, maybe a train, right? But you keep on pushing yourself a little bit and you say, okay, maybe I can take a boat. Maybe I can take a bicycle. Or maybe even I can walk, right? But let's say all these are impossible. Is there any other method? <laughs> 
So this is where the determination is. I give you one more try, Malik. So let's say all this doesn't work out. What else can you do? I mean, let's say, I mean, the train can only reach until Malacca. From Malacca, there's another bus and so on and so forth. Because everything, you, you cannot take one all the way reach to Singapore. So what else can you do? Maybe I can go to other country and then <laughs> enter Singapore. Okay, excellent. So you start to think again. Now I can go to other country and come back to Singapore, correct? So what I'm trying to say is the same thing. You don't really have to use the normal route that you normally see. In this case, KL to Malacca, the train, bus to Johor, then walk to Singapore uh, at the Johor borderline. Then in Singapore, you can take the MRT. So this is exactly what I'm trying to share, a competition that I had before when I stopped somewhere. There are so many ways that I can do. You just have to choose one. But most of the time, we don't choose because we just say that we give up and that's it, right? So this is another example. So Malay, you want to go to Silicon Valley? Okay. Have you been to there? No. No, okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to go to Silicon Valley. What is the easiest way? To buy the ticket, right? Yes. Correct. So the ticket is about everything. If you want to stay there for two weeks, easily about 50,000 ringgit Malaysia. Yep. Do you have 50,000? Of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's say... Purchase own ticket is kind of difficult because 50,000 is a lot of money. So is there any other way that we can go to Silicon Valley? Let's say Malay want to go to Silicon Valley. What else that you can think of? How to go there? Use transportation, train. And... But you still need to pay, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. So conference, maybe as a student now, you write a paper to Silicon Valley and the university pay you, for example. And then, of course, maybe your ISS Yemen can support your transportation. Uh, you do a postdoc there, or maybe you join a competition and you win. So if you go and think hard again, maybe you can think of employment there, get a job there, uh, join some accelerated program like Magic in Stanford or a MEMDEP program. Again, sometimes life is not that straightforward, and sometimes you need to do, do, do a kind of a very mixture route Take a train to Thailand, maybe train to France, both to UK, and a one dollar flight to USA. So this could be it, lah. Okay. And for me, I always dream to go to Silicon Valley. I went there twice, fully sponsored in the past, and this is me, uh, with Google. So always, again, what I'm trying to show you the next example as well. Always try to see where you are, try to see where you want to go. This is another example. DF applying for funding. This is one of my company. We want to have 5 million fund. DF start from the founder. We get some money. Do we have 5 million in our pocket? Of course not. <laughs> so maybe Malik, a quick question. Let's say, I mean, today talk is about how to become an entrepreneur, yes. how to start a company, right? Mm. So let's say you open a business, for example, a simple one, you want to do some e-commerce, you need to rent a place. Yes. Rent a place in Malaysia is about, let's say, 2,000 ringgit. One year is about 2,000 for, uh, it's about, is it 12 times two? How much is that? It's 24. Yeah, 24,000. So 24,000 that you pay salary and whatnot is about 50,000 regular Malaysia. Do you have 50,000? Maybe sure. you have. <laughs> but let's say we want to have 5 million. Do we have 5 million ringgit? Sure, no. Sure, not. So how do we get the 5 million? Maybe uh, first like, get fund and then <laughs> check the, that place, the expense fund. Yeah, sorry, Amale. Today you are chairman and being asked by me. <laughs> okay, again, DF, again, whatever business you are, you will need some capital to do the job. Number one, of course, you ask from founder. But Sunday, five million, uh, you cannot just rely on founder, we can ask from family. But this is where you try not to ask first because when you ask from bank, you cannot return back. That is a problem. Then you ask from bank, but you don't have any track record. Bank normally don't want to fund you. Then you ask for some of the organization in Malaysia where pray to fund. Then if you look into this, is the obvious road. What are the not obvious one? Those are actually not familiar to us. For example, in Malaysia, you can get L2M, you can get Mosty Techno Fund, you can MDV. But again, each of these even cannot give you 5 million shot because of a lot of reason. So in reality, for DF, for example, we get the first funding from founder. After that, we get the second fund from family. 
we get some fund from credit press and mostly and finally we get fund from investor so all together we get about five million ringgit for the foundation okay um so from that perspective we go into innovation and i i share a little bit i really like innovation this is climbing robot there is a robotic stuff that i did and from 2001 to 2010 my mindset was all about even joint competition with the six that i have if you remember what is the six secret tips uh, and the most important one that i share is actually the determination that was really pure research and this is uh, another example back in 2004 and 5, we actually make a big me. It's actually devices to predict when the bus is about to arrive. And this is a uh, talking glove. Can you hear, Malik? Yes. No. No sound. Can you hear the sound? No, no, no sound. No problem. So this is actually a talking glove. When you saw the signal, it will just tell what is it, the uh, uh, arm and so on. Um, what I'm trying to share is at that time the company came to us and said, Hey, young, do you want to commercialize the product? We said no because uh, at that time my interest is really doing innovation and not really on the commercialization. Um, so when I came back to Malaysia back in 2010 after my PhD in London, then I read some article and there are some very interesting studies. The study which looked at Malaysia and Thailand in particular found that in this country, very little research could be commercialized. And even when it is, it does not yield a large financial payoff. So a lot of research being done in Malaysia and also actually in every country, including Iraq, Yemen, Egypt, and so on. But most of the things actually stay in university, none in the industry. Uh, so last year, you're being also said that for industrial art in Malaysia is only 8.6% compared to Singapore 48 and Japan 64. So then there's something not right in our way of doing art. Maybe our mindset is just innovation, publication, and so on, but never think of how to commercialize it. Uh, finally, I start back in 2011 when I came back, then I start to uh, look into that, how to really commercialize a research product, a, a mindset change. For that perspective, you look into the bottom two, fund received for commercialization revenue, it was all zero. Back in 2011, they start to have some money, 500,000 and 50,000 revenue. And moving forward until 2016, I have a 5 million revenue. And there are potential a lot of uh, research, IP, and so on. Of course, I have, don't have an update until 2020. Now I have uh, accumulated about 30 over million revenue. So again, the mindset change actually bring this uh, innovation and research more valuable, which I'm going to share a little bit more. What what kind of uh, what kind of a method what kind of uh, perspective that we want to see when we start doing some innovation? Okay, uh, so this is a part when I came back from uh, you know from London I come back to Malaysia, it was very tough for me to do business. I think not only me a lot of uh, student and lecturer want to do also very tough because the culture is not there. And um, we were very lucky because the team are very supported is Dr. Wahid and we visited DF. And uh, Dr. Wahid and also the top manager came and said, hey, Yong, uh, from the top down, from the government perspective, they want the research product to be commercialized, but they don't have a policy because they don't even know how to do the policy. So that was 10 years ago. Then they said, okay, let's do it and see how it goes. So along the way, one way that I want to share is if you want to be good in a business, before I go into that, uh, maybe I'll ask Malik a quick question. Uh. I'm not sure if I asked this question before. So Malik, have you, what, what are you good at sport? You play football or you play basketball? Uh, I play uh, football mostly and uh, I used to be a marathon. marathon. Oh, you used to be a marathon. Okay, good. I will ask about the marathon question then. So marathon, um, let's say you want to play a marathon. Do you want to do you want to exercise with those that actually don't like marathon? If you want to begin a marathon, okay. do you want to be trained with the with the people that actually don't like marathon? No. No. Why? Because it won't motivate you, right? Yes, true. If if you are doing marathon, how how what is the furthest that you run before? The first? The furthest. Uh, the furthest. It's like uh, 20 kilometers. Excellent. 
if you ask me, uh, Malik, I say, Young, do you want to run a 20 kilometer? I was like, oh, don't, don't, don't. I will actually vomit throughout the way. It was so tough. Then I'll ask you why you want to torture yourself to run 20 meter, 20 kilometer, and so on. Okay, when you when you try to choose your so-called partner and surrounding, you need to select the right one. For example, marathon, if you ask the marathon guy, hey, I want to run for 20 kilometers, those marathon experts are going to say, that, oh, let's do it. We need to uh, make it in less than 10 minute time. We don't want to drink water and see how we can uh, stay long as well. You keep on watering up yourself and, and then actually you push yourself for that, right? Yes. So it's the same thing that in life. Let's say you want to play in good badminton, ask someone that better than you, train you. Or better, someone that actually play for the state or play for the national, uh, play with you. So when I come back to do business, I have no idea how to do business as a lecturer, as a student. So if I want to do business, should I mingle around with those that don't do business or should I mingle those that do business? Yes, to those who are... Okay, good. of course, those that do business, ah, that's number one. Now that you, you know that you need, if you want to be going business, you need to mingle around with someone to do business. But it's not easy. Can you just go to Tesco and talk to the boss? Hey boss, I want to be friends with you because I want to open uh, another Tesco. Of course not. If you see some of the uh, shop there, you just tell the boss, boss, I want to be friends with you because I want to know. But it's kind of difficult. So one way that I did was when I came back, I joined competition that related to business. So this is one of we call Alliance Bank Smart Biz Academy. And the requirement was easy. You need to have a business, you need to pitch, and you need to be shortlisted. But the selection was very tough. I think there are about 450 uh, applicants. They only choose the top 20. What are the chances for you to get, get selected? It was not easy. And why I joined this? Because I want to meet Tan Sri Liu Ke Singh. He's a founder of SP Satya in Kova. And I want to meet him because I want to learn from him from uh, how to do business. Uh, and, and of course, like I said, I just cannot just go to Tan Sri Liu Ke Singh and say, that, hey, I want to be your friend because I want to learn business from you. So you, again, you need to reach certain level or, or, or try to fight for a position. I joined this competition. Again, like I said, 450, shortlisted to 20, and I'm, we are very fortunate to be shortlisted. And among them, not only that I met Tan Sri Liu Ke Singh, which is him, why I know, why I know Tan Sri Liu Ke Singh, if you're in London, there is this park called Battersea. I was in London at the time. Battersea was a place that actually at that time being uh, a lot of a country tried to bid for the place from Hong Kong, UK, Germany, US, and Malaysia. And at that time, I think that Malaysia would not get the place because uh, Malaysia is a very small country compared to the rest. And during the so-called decision, then Malaysia won the, won the place. So it was like, wow, amazing. So the better thing going to turn into the multi-million development for resident and also uh, 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 shop and commercial. So at that time, I was really want to meet Tan Sri Liu Ke Singh and it took me like two and three years to join the competition and managed to meet him. So I still remember he told me about how he did a business. Tan Sri Liu as a so-called housing developer and his background is a banker. So that really struck me. I was like, how a banker can become a developer? So he shared a lot of insight and whatnot. So this is one. And when I joined this uh, pitching competition, also a, co a business competition, not only I learned from the Tan Sri Liu, I also learned among, uh, among other entrepreneurs. So if you look into the bottom uh, left, this is Eng Tong. He's actually my junior, maybe 20 years ago. He founded this company called Citron. I'm not sure if you heard of Citron before. Then there is this Michael Burger Lab, uh, Christy Ng, and so on and so forth. So these are all uh, become a very good friend. Right now, actually, we're all chatting how to grow the business together. Okay. So again, if you want to do business, very important is to be associated with someone that do the business that can motivate you together to do business. This is Maidin, uh, the founder, Dr. Amin. Also, uh, he shared about business strategy, uh, about how he managed so many companies. And yeah, this is how I was in the radio. Then I joined Magic East Effort. Again, I took one year leave from UTM at that time to join this uh, program. I think out of maybe 100 that select top 20, we are one of it. 
So when we went in, we visited all kinds of a company, lah, such as uh, Facebook, Google, Groupon, Airbnb and whatnot. It's a really amazing experience. Uh, if you, I think Malay, you went, you came to DF before, right? I'm not sure you went to DF before. On one of our office, we make like a so-called playground. There is a lot of a colorful design and so on. So this is all inspired when I visited them. Okay. And this is some of the entrepreneur activity that we did. So within, I think, eight years, then we start to join Entrepreneur Award. So this is from the start. We won the best innovative uh, company. Okay. Go a little bit details. Um, so, academia entrepreneurship mindset. I think Malik, yourself as a degree and law of a student here, you need to do degree four years. And most of the time that when you want to do business, people say that, hey, why don't we work for a couple of years of experience, then you start business, right? You work for three years, you get some money, then you start the business. I think we still remember that to do the business, maybe we need about 50,000 ringgit Malaysia, then you slowly raise the fund. But if you look into this flow of line, you need about 10 years. And the risk of the business normally is, is quite high. 10 businesses, 9.5 fail, only 0 0.5 survive. So this is a journey that you may need to go to convention event. Second, people ask, maybe I ask uh, each of you, why don't you just start the business after you finish the degree? Okay. Often the problem is you don't have 50,000 to get Malaysia. And uh, you could ask your parents for the money. I mean, if your, your parents has a lot of money, I think that's not a problem. <laughs> but let's say you only have your parents use this money for the retirement. And then you ask them to borrow the 50,000. And every celebration festival, right? Raya Haji or Chinese Year or Dipawali, your parents are going to ask you, where's the 50,000? Then you say that, mom, this is only the first year. Second year, that we get, you get better. And second year, COVID came, you know. Then the business is not what you expect. And uh, then you go back and your mom and your dad ask you again, where's the 50,000, right? And the third year, when it's about to uh, get some money out, suddenly the COVID second wave came along. So all this is going to happen and finally you don't want to go back home already because of this incident. Again, there is a risk, but some, a lot of uh, uh, student entrepreneurs, they start from there, but there is a risk. So I keep on asking, why don't we just start when in your degree, you start doing your business already. In your fourth year, you need to do your degree, correct? Uh, sorry, in your final year project. Why don't you do the final project as in the real business? And this one, zero capital because the professor or the lecturer that have a research fund can fund the project. Second, you have to do your final project already for one year. Why don't you just fully focus that one year for these uh, businesses? And finally, you can still join the competition. The university love it if you win the competition. And it's a win-win situation. Why don't we do it? Okay. So maybe Malik, why? Have you, which year are you now? In second year. Second year, okay. Were you planning to do your final project as a potential business? <laughs> maybe no, maybe yes. Not sure. Not sure so far. That's... Okay, why not sure? Because there is no culture. Most of the senior they actually do degree, the final project they do as a normal project to fulfill the academia. Yeah. And of course, you need to fulfill the publication and most of the senior say, hey, don't bother so much on that. But again, if you focus on that, that can really, really help you to bring up your business to another level to reduce the risk. Uh, I have some example that I'd like to share after this. And maybe, and, and as for, um, I think I started for the last eight years. As for time go by, I'm actually pushing the first year into the degree first and second year already. So uh, this is really to reduce the risk. And again, this is, uh, process innovation on green entrepreneurship that is possible, okay? And from there, this is actually less than six years, you can restart the business. Okay, so I would like to go on a little bit on how to pitch, and um, I will just stop here first, and I would like to interact with the audience, our shop sharing here. Excellent. And uh, I like someone, if you have volunteer to give a uh, quick pitching on your product. So before I start, maybe I just want to ask how many of you uh, already have a business or don't have a business yet, or someone that raised the fund. 
if you can just say that uh, I want to pitch, reply here, I want to pitch, reply here, I want to pitch. I just put here, is there anyone want to pitch? P -I -T -T -S. Okay, I just need maybe a few. Don't worry, I need one or two, just an example how to do pitching. And from that uh, presentation, I'm going to give my feedback. Uh, then after that, I'm going to give some slides uh, to share that how I normally do the pitching. So I have two here, Abdul Aziz and Asalan. Okay, good. Maybe I start from uh, Abdul Aziz first. Mali, if you can unmute Abdul Aziz. Okay. And Abdul Aziz, if you can show your video. And Asalan, maybe you can uh, prepare yourself. Huh? Abdul Aziz? I think he's unmuted now. Abdul Aziz, if you can unmute now and you show your video so that everyone can see you. See you the next uh, businessman <laughs> or you either, you already have a small businesses. Abdul Aziz? Okay, otherwise we can start with Asalan first. Hello? Okay, Abdul Aziz. Yeah, my camera. Yeah, I'm a bit outside. I'm, it's a bit dark here. Can ah, I just okay. speak? No problem. Okay, uh, as usual, I think the pitching can be one minute, five minutes, and so on. I think this time you just do a one minute pitching so that we can know what you are doing. And then we have about, I mean, right now, how many here, actually? We have 75 participants here and a potential investor. Each of them have $1,000 here, about $75,000 of potential to invest in your business. It's your chance to present to them and what if they actually want to invest in you. Lah. So Abdul Aziz, you can try now. One minute and uh, you start now. All right, doctor. First of all, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have a small business, not that big one, a uh, small business. So I buy phones here, then I ship to my hometown. Yeah. So that's the small business I'm running now. Finish? uh yeah okay thank you very much that is only 23 seconds uh that's perfect i mean uh you you it's very clear that you do what businesses about the same time and selling but again like i mentioned there are 75 people here with the 75 thousand dollar uh, and don't think that they're going to invest you because the information is not enough malik will you invest to abdul aziz <laughs> Maybe. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, maybe. Uh, more, yeah, Abdul Aziz, later I'm going to share a little bit how to improve your pitching so that, uh, I mean, the investor know uh, what you are trying to do. Lah. So, next one. Uh, Asalan. Is it Asalan? Yeah. yeah, you can pitch anything. It doesn't have to be a business. Asalan or Ame Ahmad. Okay, just unmute. Who's that? Asalan? Is it Asalan? Yeah, Asalan, you can try? Yes. Okay, I give you one minute. Huh? Asalan, are you there? Asalan? It's already unmute, but you cannot see. Okay, I need one more, then I can share uh, the pitching. Maybe and, uh, Amr, Amr Ahmed? Yep, Ami Ahmad. Where's Ami Ahmad? Hi. Good. Can you show a video? Just a... Okay. Ah, you look familiar. <laughs> you are not in my entrepreneurship class. No, doctor, I was in your robotics class. You're in my another class, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, great. You have uh, one minute and you start now. Um, okay. Um, my, uh, I'm developing a uh, brain computer uh, interface, which is a way to translate human thoughts into actual commands that can later be run by computers. 
uh, why, what contribution could this project uh, give uh, is in uh, different fields. One of them is uh, prosthetics, uh, as well as um, any uh, robotics that aid uh, those who has disabilities. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to keep it short as possible because he said one minute. <laughs> well, you just pitch for 38 seconds. <laughs> okay. What I can add more is uh, currently uh, the project is in uh, in development stage. We had uh, promising results, and uh, we're going for next phase, which will require some kind of funding to uh, to get the electrodes and uh, to perform f further vigorous testing. Uh, the key idea about our project is utilizing machine learning and specifically deep learning in categorizing these. Okay, two times up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <That's laughs> okay, uh, Ahmad, thank you very much. So I hear you, you were think, doing some uh, VCI machine, uh, I mean, with the brain control, is it? Yeah, main computer interface. Okay. And, and then you did some experiment, it's a good result and so on. Yeah. Okay, now I will just feedback on uh, Ami Ahmad. You continue with me, then I will go back to uh, Abdul Aziz just to my command. So again, you have a very short one minute. Again, when we said pitching, you have you have to try to imagine that. Uh, have you heard of an elevator pitch before? Me? Uh, yes, uh, the competition uh, innovation Malaysia. Yeah. Well, you won first really place. I won third place. <laughs> well, excellent! Congratulations. <laughs> So elevator pitch is is actually means that uh, it just happened that for example you as a, uh, as a innovator you have a good business product idea you need some investment money it just happened you go to the lift and maybe another someone. rich person come in maybe Elamas right yeah. and this lift from one floor to another floor you only have one minute yeah. and you need to tell him what you are doing and what you want from him okay yeah. So from this perspective, Ahmad just now you just explain what you do, but you didn't ask what you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So again, then, I mean, Alema will just say, yeah, good idea. Then we just laugh. <laughs> and the other perspective is the information is not enough. You just, I mean, when you do the presentation, you say, hey, I do the BCI, brain control, promising result, and so on. But again, as a business person, they want to see the market size. How big is the market? Sure. This is something missing as well. Sure. Okay. So, uh, do you have a proper way to do this pitching, or you have no idea how to do pitching? Just from experience of several competitions, that's it. Okay. And I understand that, that, that the objective is it's like you're talking to an investor, and this investor doesn't have any time. Basically, you have a very small window. You need to explain your idea. And why is it innovative? Why is it worth funding it? And what do you need from me? <laughs> okay. What are the four How important things? What are the four important things in the pitching? Okay, if I have to uh, name them, let's say first of all, uh, uh, the, uh, the the feasibility of the idea. Feasibility. Okay. Uh, competi uh, competitive advantage. Let's say. Okay. Uh, Concise explanation about the project has to be there, of course. Okay. And let's say uh, one more thing. Uh, how can I help you get money? Something like that. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one is spot on. Two are not so much. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I'm going to share more on. There's a structural way to do a pitching in one minute. Sure. And uh, yeah, I will share that. So thanks, uh, Ahmed. Wonderful uh, sharing. So for Azizi, are you still there? Azizi, are you still there? So maybe I just comment for Aziz. Just now when you first start, he greet me, which I thankful. But when you have one minute, uh, normally you don't greet so long. <laughs> because again, uh, time is go. You need to really futilize the time to straight to the point and what you want. And back into Abdul Aziz, now I do understand that you sell this uh, chip to back your country and so on, but you never tell about what is a market size similar to uh, Amir just now? You never tell what you want and all this. Correct, Abdul Aziz? Yeah, correct, correct, correct. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do one pitching for you guys, just uh, the one of the business that I have. And okay. uh, then you can have a rough feeling. So try to digest a little bit, then we can uh, discuss. After that, I'll go to back to my slide. Okay. 
So okay. I'll start my time, one minute, and start now. Hi, my name is Yong. I'm a CEO of uh, KK Innovation. 52,000 people suffer stroke in Malaysia. This is a huge problem. Rehabilitation can help to regain their ability, but we don't have enough physiotherapy to cater such a large number. And ladies and gentlemen, we have designed and developed a CR2 or compact rehab robot to solve this problem. CR2 is a portable and affordable robotic system to be able to help stroke patients to train virtual reality. With CR2, stroke patients can train 100 times more compared to conventional. Um, there are several rehab robots out there, so I have Gentle S, MIT Manners from US, Amil, but they are very expensive and bulky. CR2 actually excel in all these aspects. We are looking for 500,000 Radio Malaysia and your support to grow this business. I'm looking forward for it. Thank you very much. Okay, guys. So that is actually 48 seconds. And I, I'm not saying that I'm going to say that this is a perfect picture and whatnot. Maybe I just want to have some interaction back to uh, Abdul Aziz and so uh, Abdul Ameh. What do you think? Maybe I start from Abdul Aziz first. Yeah, doctor, it was it was very brief. Uh, I got some information, so I think it's uh, quite okay. Quite okay, lah. Okay. Ah, uh, quite quite okay. <laughs> okay, good. Ame. Ame, Ame, is it? Yeah, Ame. Ah, uh, yes, doctor. What do you think? Ah, uh, it was almost perfect. <laughs> uh, right. You mentioned the competitive advantage, which is that you are cheap. You can compete easily with 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 the, the market. You can enter yeah. the market, yeah. and you were very specific about how much you want. Yep. And what do you need to develop the project? Okay, excellent. Uh, again, I'm not saying that this is one of the best uh, pitch and whatnot, but I just want to share with you this pitch have raised me one million ringgit for this business, and this is a true story. Uh, why again in, in pitching from the audience, from the panel, from the investor, what they want to know is the more like I mentioned is a market. How big is your market actually? Second, it's really the approach. And the approach I didn't emphasize too much, it's about 25% of my time. Then it's very important the benefit. And of course, uh, competitor, you need to tell what are your difference between the competitor. And finally, is what are you really asking for? If you don't ask anything, then the pitching is actually just like a casual talk, right? Okay. So I'll go back to my uh, slide. <clears throat> so thanks for the two gentlemen just now to pitch your business in one minute. And in real life, there is one minute, there is three, five minutes, all the way until 20 and 30 minutes, depending on the nature of the pitching. So I went through to a few. And most of the pitching, actually, I, I use this uh, formula. This is from uh, SRI, Stanford Research Institute, uh, NABC approach, called Need, Approach, Benefit, and Competition. So why this is important, actually, like I mentioned just now, what are the four key things? Number one is the need. What are the so-called important customer? What are the market need? So you start from the market size. What are the bigger market size? Then we understand all. Oh, like for example, the first uh, gentleman, Aziz, you said that you want to ship the so-called micro cut to your country. Maybe you can start with, there are how many million people in your country doesn't have the access to this uh, chip? And you are trying to fulfill that uh, uh, so-called market. Your know, approach is because you are here, you know some network, and then you can buy process or you can speed up the process. And the benefit is you can normal is one month to get the chip to your customer now because of you you can reach your customer in ways of maybe one week and the customer are very happy competition maybe people like you but for you you say you have a better maybe website better strategy and whatnot so back again you this is one way to have an nbc uh, so how to start to create a value proposition write it down I mean, don't worry, you'll be in the right at first, but start from the basic is an NABC. Then you keep on test again, test again, and test again. Uh -huh. This one's like, I will pass to you, and then later you can read yourself. And this is where I want to share about the NABC. For example, cell phone use in America is increasing. People like to use cell phone in, in while driving. Government is regulating use because it's worried about the danger of distracted driver. And there is an emergency need for a safe way to commit while driving. So from the need, they come up with an approach. 
leverage SRI world-class voice recognition technology to provide a hands-free solution. Cell low-cost software that enables cell phone to use voice activation for dialing and enough. So this is an approach and back go to benefit. Hands-free is safer. Software applied to most cell phones. Software easy to install. Value added service for mobile carrier. And finally, competition. Great number of cars have built in speech activity car. Not all say are pushing the cell phone safety issue through legalization. If you look into this, uh, this is back into 2006, you know. You know what is this software name, Malay? Yes. You have an idea what is this uh, product? <laughs> no idea? No. This is actually C uh, Siri of Apple. You know the Siri? Yes. Yes, Siri of uh, iPhone. Okay. So back in uh, 2006 early, uh, the, the SRI, they came up with this software actually for military. And uh, the media couldn't use it, so they tried to pick it into commercial. So this is the uh, NABC, they use it. And one day Steve Jobs saw it, then Steve Jobs said that they want this in the phone. So that's why series in the phone because of this NABC. Okay? So move forward. NABC, of course, you can be general, uh, but better if you go a little bit more detailed numbers. For example, the need, the market is going fast. The star Ahmad say, my product show impressive result. That one is not, 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 not so powerful. It has to be more numerical. Like this, the market is going fast. Rather, you should put, our market segment is 2 billion per year and growing at 20% per year. Approach, we have a clever design. Go a bit more specific. We have created a one-step process that replaces the current two-step process with the same quality. Benefit, again, the hour is excellent. And just now, um, I think Ahmad Ahmed uh, said, the, uh, the result is impressive. So it's, it's not measurable. So you put say, our one-step process reduce our cost by 50% and result in an expected hour of 50% per year with a profit of 30 million in year three. Competition, we are better than our competitor. Full stop. You need to be more specific. Our competitor is Evergreen Corporation. We use the current two step process. We own the IP for our new process. Okay. So this will make your page more powerful and people look at you and know that what you are doing. Okay. This one I will just uh, go through. You can even Google this as well. What is how to write a better need, better approach, customer benefit, and so on. So these are the exercise. Uh, uh, do we have time? Okay, maybe I will just back to Aziz and uh, I will just stop sharing first. Okay, maybe I don't have, now it's already 10.22. I think I will just proceed, yeah? Let me share back the screen. Okay, so for uh just now we have two gentlemen aziz and also Ahmad amin for aziz you may want to start with a hope uh just now you say that you want you ship actually the chip back to the country then you can say that for example hey uh mr investor there are about 10 million in my country doesn't have a phone uh, has a phone but the problem is they don't have a chip so i have found a very easy way or method to send the chip to the country Okay, so that is a whole underneath approach. You can say that I'm liaising with a lot of collaborators in Malaysia, uh, actually 10 of them with Maxis, with blah, 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 and I get a very, very uh, good price. Benefit, it actually benefits my customer in my country. They can purchase at this point, but at the same time also can bring up the whole value chain. Competitor, you can say that I have a few friends doing the same thing, but what make me different from others because I'm focusing on the a premium customer. Us, I'm looking for maybe $200,000 for my business. Okay. Aziz, are you there? Aziz, are you there? <laughs> okay. So, us sometimes doesn't necessarily to be money. Sometimes us can be actually a partner. For example, you can say that uh, I'd like to ask you to become my partner. I'd like to ask you to join my company as a staff and so on. So this is really 
to tell uh, on the other side what is your business all about. Okay, the next one is uh, Ahmad Ameh. Ameh, are you still there? Um, yes, doctor. Okay, do you want to try to use this one, two, three, four, five, six? Okay. Just try to fill the blank and, and tell about your product. Okay, let's say for Hulk, I will start with, uh, can you imagine if, if, if uh, artificial limbs can be moved using brain signals? Okay, and like that. Then, uh, and then the need in the market itself is that uh, prosthetics are very complicated in their movements. Uh, so does any aiding robotics for, for, for those who are uh, in disability. Uh, hence, uh, providing uh, solutions for control to enable various methods of control will be very helpful. Uh, the approach, we, I'm, use, uh, I'm developing a brain computer interface that can uh, uh, predict uh, motor imagery signals with 90% accuracy uh, uh, and with minimal training that can only last for three days. Uh, that can effectively classify brain commands and then it can be used uh, with the interface to the, to the robotic end. And then the benefit is that uh, such solution is innovative. There is, uh, uh, let's say, um, in, in terms of benefit, doctor, what does it mean? <laughs> well, I mean, do you help people to regain back movement? Do you help? Oh, I, see, I see, I see, I see. So, so let's say the, the ethical uh, return, let's say something. So uh, people can now control uh, that we can achieve uh, uh, prosthetics that can be controlled similar to uh, real life uh, limbs. And then let's say for competitors, there's uh, this company one, two, three, and these companies uh, does not promise such accuracy. Uh, our, our solution is innovative based on new technology, deep learning, let's say that was only developed uh, very soon while other competitors rely on a different approach. Uh, hence, our, our, our approach is, is more promising. So what I will ask is, uh, let's say, uh, we're in this certain phase of development. I need this amount of money, let's say 100, 100K. In, in terms of, actually, I'll need more. <laughs> <laughs> the, equipment, the equipment alone is, is, is uh, the equipment alone is, is like 150 for the first. <laughs> Or just uh, recording uh, for for trials and so let's say in the development phase I will need like uh, about 200k just just uh, just to to to, to reach uh, a specific case and then the next phase will we can do commercialization with a head uh, with a headset that can be mounted in in this, uh, in less than two minutes. Okay, excellent. I think this really got you to do what your things are and I get more clearer. Maybe just a quick comment. I like your hope. You can just say that, imagine that you can do whatever thing, blah, blah, blah. So I like that. I think the need is something not correct because you're still pushing a lot of uh, technology already. Don't, don't go into your approach yet. Try to focus on the market. So what are you? what is your device about? It? What are you trying to solve? Is it for protesting people? Is uh, it for stroke patient? Is it for people that paralyze? Uh, yeah, so let's say I'm focusing more on, on, on robotic control, which, which is more uh, and such such usage because you, uh, for, other, for other types of control, you have various other methods. This method only excel, I mean, using your brain to, to, to do the commands is only excels when it comes to something that the brain would normally control. <laughs> okay, excellent. So you are trying to solve uh, industrial, uh, industrial robot market co uh, brain control. Okay, so that is a huge market. You can just say that this is a 10 million market size. Right now, it's being yeah. run by a conventional controller. I see. That is a need. That approach, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very unique, uh, modern, high-tech, deep learning brain control machine to control all these robots. Sure. The benefit is super fast. It actually uh, 100 times faster than the conventional robot. It's very safe. Competitor, right now, they are not as do as high-tech with big data. We are the only one that has a big data and we are asking for 1 million so that we can actually run this business on that blah, blah, blah and so on. Okay. 
Okay, thank you, Ahmad. Let's proceed. Right. <laughs> so I hope that really give you an idea when you do the pitching, you can try to put this, of course, one minute, five minute, and 10 minutes. Along the way, when your presentation goes by, this information going to expand more as well. Something that I didn't put here is like financial forecast, cash flow, and so on. But this is good enough for you to start. And this is a slide that actually I just pitched early on for the CR2. Oh, I would just say 52,000 people suffer stroke in Malaysia. There's a huge problem. Then need I mentioned that rehabilitation can help to regain their ability, but we don't have enough physiotherapists. So the problem statement is we don't have enough physiotherapists. And I have a number, which is about 52,000 people suffer stroke. Approach, then we have designed and developed this CR2 robot. And the benefit is uh, can train 100 times more compared to conventional. As a competitor, we have from Gentle S, MIT Manus, and Amio. These are very famous ones, but they are very expensive bulky. And we are looking for 500,000 and your support to grow the business. So at least the ending part, you need to ask something to conclude the conversation. Either you ask for money, you ask for partner, you ask for partnership and whatnot. You need to ask somehow, yeah? So here I would like to focus more on the case study. So before I go into that, uh, any question? Let me stop the share because I see someone move. Um, well, someone got it why something that I cannot understand. <laughs> okay, before I proceed, uh, the next stage is all about case study that I have uh, run on my business. I will share that. So before I, sh I, I continue, any question from your side? If there's no question, you can just say no on the chat box. If you yes, then you can just yes, then uh, I will answer some of your questions first before I proceed to the next one. Okay, if you find no, then I will proceed. Any question? Okay, excellent. There's no question, then I continue my talk. Just share with you some of the company that I'm running. And then uh, hopefully we can learn something from here. You can see the slide, huh? So case number one is taking innovation. Um, healthcare market is expected to reach $126 billion. It's huge, you know? I mean, we just want to take one or 2% from here, we become uh, very rich already. Uh, this is an example. If you still remember, one of my proposal is you start your business in your final project. So this is called Kansan Story. During his final project, he came to me and I asked him one thing only. Do not treat your final project as a final project. I repeat that. Eh? Do not treat your final project as a final project. Because if you treat your final project as a final project, if you keep on thinking that the first master, you just write proposal design, purchase will be the next master, right? And the second semester, when you start building the stuff and things doesn't work out, then you just say, that, okay, I will do the last day before the presentation. On the last day of the presentation, when they don't work up, then you tell the lecturer and panel say that he was working yesterday, but not today. So that is a very typical when they do final project because the old idea is you follow a very standard SOP. So I tell Kang Sam, don't do that. Why don't you just spend this one year, two semester to focus on a product or project that can really commercialize. So he started thinking and brainstorming. Then he went to a hospital. And he saw a stroke patient actually dragging the leg. Then he said, okay, he want to build something for the stroke patient. That's why he built this compact rehab robot. For the first month when he is in this uh, so-called FIP, he already built the product and he actually joined a competition called My Innovacy. He won 5,000. And the next month he went, he won the first prize, 50,000 in Indonesia. And within that one year, actually he won a lot of a different award. And the last, the, the highest one is actually he went to UK. He won the World Invention Award, Diamond Award, and Gold Medal. So this is the typical journey of, of him. First year and third year, he learned all of a skill. He joined Robocon. He joined some of the activities just like you all. I mean, learning everything. Then fourth year, he started to go to NASAM. It's a National Show of Social Malaysia. It just happened that this is his... Uh, interest of thing that he wanted to do. He tried to understand what is lacking, what is the need, what is the problem in that field. From there, he started to build a prototype. So this is one of the prototype. And slowly, he joined competition that I mentioned earlier on. He won more than 30 awards. And finally, uh, he founded this company called Tech Innovation. 
and we as a big event in international arena including thailand singapore india uk and so on um we want met a lot of uh three prime minister as you can see here um so this project is actually for patient to hold and then if they play games and you might say that actually when you as a student doing business is were very challenging but three of them, Ko Kang Siam, Patrick and Swan Ken, they won actually wide Chancellor Award, Malaka Award and Shell Academy Award. And three of them are first class students while doing the businesses. So this is the patient slide I just quickly show to you. And uh, 15 million suffer stroke every year. Conventional, they need to train with physiotherapists. And in one year, they only train like 48 hours, right? So for robot training, they can actually train 1,000 hours which is about 23 times more. So from there, there's a lot of a robot out there, which is work, but unfortunately they are huge, compact, and very expensive, which is about $100,000. So this is what we propose, a compact rehab robot. Uh, so you may cannot hear the voice, I will just quickly show you. So you can choose the game, and they train the arm, are actually uh, moving the robot. And the robot is actually accessing your hand as if a physiotherapist. So we have won the award, pattern pending, media, we play trial, to a few countries. So this can be here to different movement. And of course, very important is uh, there is data that can be stored and then you can look back what is the problem. And when we design this robot, we say we want to compact so everything can to get small. Second innovation. So this is a FIP project before and FIP, uh, balance board is another one. We actually done by a final project student as well, joined my university, won, and then uh, we start selling already. I don't have more information. This is a recent one. We do a smart sense to do auto temperature testing and also uh, sanitizing. And we sold at the uh, Shopee. And then we have some media coverage, you know, room map. So for the last, this was started from my PhD in Imperial College. Then we do prototype, Kang Sang take over. And then around we have all kinds of product that we wanted to do for the healthcare related product. So this is first company. And this is my second company that I like to share, DF Automation. DF stands for driving the future of robotics. So the customer or the market need that we were addressing is a mansion plant can be as big as 20,000 square meter. And inside there's a lot of people. Every morning they move the wet raw material to the production line. After they finish the job, the finished good need to go somewhere else. So the operator basically push this good from one place to another. Uh, so we rely a lot on physical workforce like operator. They need to walk up to three kilometer and take up to five kg. So this is a low skill job, human factor and cost. Um, then people are starting to use AGV, la, but this is C1950. But the question is in Malaysia, this region, not many people use. Reason simple is it's difficult to program, not flexible and costly. So this is where we start to build our own technology. Uh, the NetList, where you can program the robot to this. So again, very important is actually the software NetList. Uh, it's a software that can add, it's like a brain with AI to control the robot. So the robot has a motor, it can do auto charge, it has a LiDAR sensor and so on. And maybe the next video can show you. So this is one typical robot. And same robot can be used at the time or customized for different applications. For do conveyor, towing, hooking. And these are our clients. Uh, this one in Vietnam, you can go and pick up the trolley automatically and move. This is in uh, Kulim Kada. This one in Ho Chi Minh, you carry 200 kg of a load.
Uh, this one is Singapore ferry wafer. So you can see what we try to do is actually to help the company to reduce reliance on operator. And the return on investment is really they don't have to hire so many operators, the robot can do the job. And in these cases, there are multiple robots, so we develop a software to control the traffic of the robot. So there's a little bit of the AI there. And the robot can talk to the dog, can talk to the lift, to go whichever lift, uh, whichever level they want. So it's like a full solution of uh, intra logistic for us. Yeah. So this is a design and development in Malaysia, in Johor Bahru. I think some of you have visited the company. Lah. So moving forward, uh, we also do this uh, sushi restaurant. If you are a bit who like me, Valley, I want more, or you pass market, you can buy something. Normally, when you go to sushi restaurant, you can take the sushi on the conveyor. Sometimes you order some special sushi. So this one, chef will be new, but rather than the chef, you know, we use the robot to bring the food. So that, uh, again, uh, the, the, the rest of the food or the chef will focus on making the food uh, rather than to <laughs> deliver the food. So this is, again, another example of uh, smart manufacturing. So you can see here, there are four robots, two cobalt and one cobalt. Basically, there are seven so-called machine or robot working together in one plant. So here we have actually the FMS system on the top left to coordinate everything. So again, this is kind of like the smart manufacturing that we are working on. Okay. And i like to touch a little bit on the COVID-19 recently when the MCO being a trigger in Malaysia, 25 March from the Prime Minister, then NAF Automation also pivot a little bit and we said that, hey, we want to help the hospital. So we propose bigger robot and also disinfection robot using spray, disinfection robot using UV and telepresent robot. From that uh, period, we actually deliver a robot to uh, hospital UKM. And we are featured in some newspaper, I think some of you may aware, the robot called Makikia. It actually deliver food from the central kitchen to the wife. The whole reason is uh, we want to reduce the nurses to send the food because when the nurse meet the patient, they may get infected by the virus. So we are in all kinds of uh, news and this is within uh, in, in actually March. So what you can do in the seven days during the MCO really, we have thousands of WhatsApp messages during the lockdown, hundreds of concept design, lots of video conference meeting, tons of media outreach and money we have won uh, Machikia. And not only Machikia, during that um, season, we were called by Prime Minister's office we need to send another robot actually to another side. Oh, I didn't touch that. So again, this is our pattern IP. We have won some award. So I'll show a little bit on the back end. This is how we started near Photomation. We were small, we were at home, 2012. Then in 2016, we have a one small shop lot. 2018, we moved to a bigger factory. And then actually 2020, we have another factory already. It's a bigger one. So when we first started, only three of us, myself and Ping Hua and Ricky, both of them are my students. And then uh, 2014, we are this size, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we have a bit more, 10-ish, 2016. And uh, this is all x robot corner because they have a very strong uh, technical. 2017, we are about maybe 20-30. And 2019, we have about 55 staff. You can see that the company grow from very small, about one or two people, then uh, six, seven, 10, 20. Now we, I think this year now, now as we are speaking now, we have about 60 staff already. K3 is another project that uh, Dr. Eileen is doing. I'm working in this project as well called Mini Heart Catcher. So cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the world. Again, you see that every time when I start presenting, I start with the market need, the need. It's very important. 17 million deaths each year. So what is the so-called approach that we do is actually a mini heart catcher that can measure your heart rhythm using the apps. This is the example. You can just put the electron and then they will translate to the phone, go to the cloud and do the prediction. And of course, we do some uh, uh, publication on that matter. Lah. So this is, we've raised 500,000 using the same NABC method as well. 
Inside technology is the current team that I'm having now with my one PHA two master. Uh, so what they do is actually do a prediction of machine failure. And during the FIP project, uh, they won in Innovate Malaysia, they won in micro, Microsoft, SaaS, and so on. And recently, we get 500,000 to run this uh, research to push forward. So this is a recent photo that we are taking. Uh, you can see me that I'm wearing a Google Smart Glasses. This one, actually, I can see the robot in VR and AR so that I can do the maintenance. Okay, so this is how it looks like. Uh, so that we can actually do training better, do predictive maintenance better as well. Uh, this is some of the ongoing uh, research. Case five, some of you may have heard this IROS. Uh, two years ago, I started this with some of the students. The whole idea is for this group to learn what is AI, robot operating system, and IoT. So within that short year, we visited our company and we also joined a lot of uh, different competitions. So we won the Great Lab first prize, the NI Autonomous Robot first prize, and so on. So you can see that the, the methodology I try to do is still the same. You do innovation either in your final project, assignment, and you join competition to validate your idea. After you have this good idea, and so on, then the next step is actually really to push to the business and commercialization. Okay, I like to conclude my presentation already. So as a conclusion, it seems tough for an academician or student to venture to entrepreneurship. But in reality, it's really, it is full with great opportunity. University have all the top talents. I mean, like I say, when you know the business, number one, it's very important to get a team. And right now in university, you have all the great talent, all with hunger of success. So you have all the friends that you can actually build a company already. Strong network, okay? You have fun really, facility and really low, low risk if you start business already when you are in this uh, so-called study. Because you do assignment, you do your final project. Why don't you just focus to use this to be your uh, potential business? So I like to ask back about this question. Uh, I won't, I mean, university research entrepreneurship, is it a match in heaven? So early on, I can see that about maybe 10, 20% of you say that is yes, and the rest of you say it's kind of difficult and so on. But if you look into this question back, actually you are in a very good position to start. Um, and people are start to revamp the whole education system. They want to say that how to make your work in the university relevant to the industry. A lot of support from outside. I'd like to end the presentation in this slide. If you still remember this, uh, where you are, where you want to be, and so many pathway that we can do. So first thing first, try to forget all these things, okay? Very important is you need to know that um, you have gazing in of option uh, to reach where you want to be. But first, very important is you need to make your first move. And for that, I'd like to say thank you. And uh, thank you, Mali, once again for this uh, invitation to talk. And I open for question and answer if there's any. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. And we are glad to to hear that from you. So, uh, anyone have any question? Uh, just feel free to ask or write down in the in the chat box. Then we will uh, read or we will uh, unmute you. Yeah, you so, say any question? Yeah. So this is the Q and A session. Any question? Everyone seem clear how to do a business already. Okay, Fidel asks how to find the needs. Um, I can share with you how I start DF automation. So do I start DF automation making edge as a first instance? Not really. Uh, this company in Johor Bahru came to UTM and they say that they have a lot of a problem. So they asked UTM if he can extend help. So we went into the company. It's a big MNC company doing PCB for consumer product. They have about maybe two to 3,000 operators. So we went in, we see a lot of labor. They, they actually push trolley, they flip the PCB and so on. So one of the problem that I can, we can help is actually we are making mobile robot for Robocon. Then we say, hey, why don't we use a robot to help them. So that's how we start to start understand the need. Then we ask the customer, 
why don't you just buy the robot from Japan and also buy from uh, US? Then the customer say that to buy a robot from Japan and US cost them about 1 million ringgit Malaysia. It's impossible for them to get. So from there, I say, oh, there's a huge need, but at the same time, they can't afford. So from that perspective, we also want to test the market. We, we build one, we sell to them. Then they're very happy. They, in fact, buy another four, then they buy another six. They buy 10 robots from us. So imagine one company can buy 10 from us. In Malaysia, there are so many companies out there. So that's why we start to think that, hey, there is a market for this. So we start to build this robot for this particular need. And moving forward for the last eight years, uh, I think we moved into electric manufacturing. Our customer is like Celestica, Sony, Western Digital, Fashioning, Semina, and so on and so forth. And then we go into automotive, Yamaha, Produa, Suzuki. And recently, we just went into uh, healthcare. Some of you may, I just presented early on about the healthcare product. And this is also the need came up from actually the government. I, we, I was being contacted by the Ministry of Science and Technology as a robotic company. They asked, Young, can you build something for the hospital? So then we tried to understand the need. They said, oh yeah, we can do something about that. So they said within the three months, we came up with a few solutions for the hospital. So back to your question, uh, Mohamed Fidel and the rest of you, how to find the need is really number one. I mean, open your ear, move around and ask questions and then see the potential as well. There's a lot of a need out there that sometimes you don't need to handle because the market is small. And, and like I mentioned, like the DM photo, like this customer came to, they said that they want a logistic product. Then we try to look into Google a little bit on the market side, it's a billion dollar market. Then we say, hey, we want to go in. That's the reason. Uh, second thing is when you have this market, for example, in, in UTM, you want to eat Nasi lemak, but it's kind of difficult, right? But only UTM need this Nasi lemak for, uh, for a cheaper price. So you may not want to do that because the market size is very small to the UTM population only. So you may want to so-called juggle and make some uh, due diligence how big your business you want to do, right? Okay, so that is for Mr. Fidaos. So let's see the next question. What kind of a difficulty you faced when you started your company and how you overcome that? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, maybe you admit yourself, it's easier for me to have a chat rather than uh, I just talk to chat only. Malik, if you can help me to admit Ibrahim Khatan. Oh, yes, yes, sure. Yes, doctor. Hi, hey, Ibrahim, where are you now? <laughs> Hi, Ibrahim. Hello, doctor. Yes, where are you now? Um, in Johor Bahru. Oh, in Johor Bahru, okay. Yeah. So, are you in my class? Were you in my class before? Uh, no, I'm, I'm no. studying the biomedical engineering. You're in medical engineering, okay. So, what question you want to ask? What difficulties you faced when you started your company, because so, so that maybe uh, if, if a student wants to start up his own company, he can maybe avoid this, uh, if we can say mistakes or difficulty, he maybe uh, prepare himself okay. for these difficulties and how you did overcome them. Okay, good question. Um, there's a lot of uh, difficulty I went through, but just now Ibrahim did mention if we, you all know already, either you try to uh, avoid it or you try to face it. If you ask me, I think it's better for you to face it because you're going to face this anyhow. <laughs> the first difficulty that we, I had was, I'm a lecturer in UPM. I have no idea how to do business. So one thing that I try to bring uh, the value to the company is to bring an investor to the company. So the investor to come in who has a experience in businesses. Uh, to cut the story short, I managed to bring an investor coming in. And unfortunately, after one year, the, this investor actually came and went out to open another company. So he became our competitor. So this is something that I was shocked because uh, business is a very kind of like cruel situation. And of course, I'm, I never blamed him to do that because again, it's all about business. It's all about survival. But I learned in a hard way. 
from that perspective, then I start to learn to be more, I would not say smart. I, I think I had to be more careful. And when you have some core technology, you need to really protect it well. And then when you want to trust certain people, you need to try until certain extent. Uh, and, and this is number one. Number two is about finance and cash flow. Uh, at one point, our business is from 100 over 1,000 ringgit to millions. And at this time, we can actually maybe run a business for a million ringgit business. Lah. But all of a sudden, we got 2 million ringgit business. We actually cannot uh, so-called run the business because we don't have uh, cash flow to run it. Then there is a saying that, why don't you just take the business, then we, we can find fund to finance a project. So we did that. We get the business, we get that uh, PO. But once we get the PO, finally, we really have a hard time to finance a project. We talk to the bank, we talk to many, many people. It's really difficult to fund it. Okay? And even until the extent that we actually use our saving, and at that time, use the saving also not enough, then we have to use and ask our family to fund the project. At one point, also not enough. And uh, that was uh, in a much of a breakdown for the whole company. But we are very lucky at that time, I post in my Facebook, I just said that I need some help from my friend. And I didn't expect any help. I just want to share and see someone can help me. Lah. So it just happened that I have a very one good friend that I have not met for a very long time. He has a business very similar to us. And he said, that, hey, come and meet up. So I met him. And he, he looked at my company, then he just said that this is just a cash flow problem, not a big deal. And he helped me to settle the financial situation and he became our angel investor. So again, that difficulty turned out to be another very important value added to the company and it must happen. Because of that, I understand what is cash flow. I understand how to plan the financial properly. At the same time, also because of that, I knew my angel investor and this is a very important shareholder, okay? Uh, I think the third difficulty, there's a lot, like maybe I share the latest one, the third difficulty will be, maybe at this moment, EF is already 60 staff. When we are 10 staff and 60 staff, it's, it's kind of like a totally different kind of uh, managing. When we were 10 and 20, I can remember all 20 people. I can remember all their birthday. I can remember everything, you know? So at this stage, I can share with you that all of a sudden in one month, we hire 10 people. All of a sudden, we hire 5 people. I don't even know who are there. And this is, can become a problem because the culture set will be different. So now our very focus is no longer about the product, no longer much about the so-called how to go to the market. It's much about how to set the culture in the business. So how to learn them? You talk to people. You, I mix a lot with uh, other company founder. So this is what they share. Right now, we are only 60. We have these uh, so-called challenges and issue. And when we reach 100, 200 and 500, we will have another challenge and issue as well. Okay. Ibrahim, did I answer your question? Yes, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Uh, one thing. Okay. So Ahmad say, Ahmad, are you there? If you can uh, ask me directly, where am I? Malik, maybe you want to unmute Ahmad? Okay, I think he Hello. can unmute now. Doctor? Yes, your question uh, is? Okay, so uh, Doctor, this is not the first time I hear one of your talks. Uh, okay. we even, we, you even spoke with us a lot in the class and uh, we even had our own private chats. I really, really like to listen to such situations. It helps me um, have an insight into various issues that this road uh, holds. Uh, well, there is one thing that I want to ask you because generally in all of your talks, you always mention the essentials, the, the entrepreneur attitude. You should look for that. You should look for that. You should understand how the other person thinks. But there is this one small thing that I fail to understand, which is, what, how, how do I get the tools to be a real entrepreneur, someone who manages a business? Let's say for, for, if you want to be a programmer, I would, I, would, I would tell you, okay, you can start with the Harvard CS50 course or something like that. What, what type of courses are you, can, can, I, can I look for? Because there are so many things when it comes to how to attract investors, how to, how to, how to um, 
but they manage your finances, how to, uh, let's say, weight the, 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 the losses and the revenue and take risks. All of that, there is, of course, science behind that. And where can I get this type of, of oh, science? Okay. okay. Um, great question, Ahmad. Very great question. And I think the last sentence that you put there is a science behind it, all right? <laughs> Ahmad? Yes. Yeah, there is no science behind it. <laughs> so it's basically just experience. Well, I can tell you if if there is someone that know about this, uh, there's a lot of uh, successful business out there already. There's no. I mean, you can try to see the world right now. COVID-19 is a very good example. And um, there's one Australian aeroplane. I mean, there's a lot of a company just closed now. Give me some example. What a company they closed now recently? Um, uh, there is an airline in Australia called the Virgin, is it? Yeah. Okay. So imagine Virgin is founded by this uh, Richard Branson. Richard Branson is a great entrepreneur, right? Yes. And if there is a science behind every businesses, the Virgin in Singapore, uh, in Australia would not close down. Make sense? Sure. No, I, I understand in, that. Yeah. But I'm speaking on a smaller level. Let's say because because you understand what it comes to finances, what it comes to basic management at least. Yeah, yeah. I, I know where you are going to. So let me share a little bit. So to answer your question is there is no science behind. I think that's make the entrepreneurship very, very interesting. And you are you have a very limited resources. But what I meant is a remote resources is you have limited money, you yourself and also uh, your friend around you. You want to get the right people at the right time, it's not that easy. I mean, in business, number one that you want to do a great team is you need to have people, the right people in the team. For example, right now you have 50,000. You can only hire three people. What kind of uh, role that you're going to hire? So I throw back to you, Ahmad. People <laughs> that I know very well. Okay. Make sure of their technicalities because if it's only three people, uh, then the type of the organization we're running is very small. It's very dependent on each person's skills and, and attitude, let's say. Okay, good. So uh, you may answer it not correct is to get someone that you know very well as your friend, correct? But then is it you choose your best friend, not the technical, or you choose them because of the technical or not the best friend? <laughs> Uh, trust is a factor, but but of course, when it comes to a small organization, a startup, yeah. one idea, one good technique, one good technician can lead the whole project into a different level. Yeah. Okay. So you have back to, to the that. question. I think this is uh, going to be very helpful to the rest of the team. Let's say you want to choose the three people that is good in certain skill. What are the skill? I just throw out some number. Uh, the name: CEO, CTO, CFO, marketing, sales. Technical programmer, digital programmer, what do you think? Which three are the most important ones in your opinion? Okay, I think one. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to a startup, especially let's say, okay, let's assume that we are speaking about a technology innovation and technology uh, related solutions. Yeah. And this is, I uh, will focus more on uh, technical skills as well as uh, interpersonal okay. skills. I got you. Yes, CTO. The other two? Someone who can advertise this product. So, so you have CMO, the other one. Okay, and um, uh, someone who has a vision. I mean, that should be me. <laughs> to look that forward. would be the CEO. Yeah, yeah, so the CEO. So from what I hear from you, you say you have a CEO, CMO, and a CTO, which is the sale, like a sale person, uh, and sales yeah. and whatnot. Then you have a technical person, and you have a marketing person, correct? Sure. Okay, then I'm going to ask you. Do you not think that the finance is not important? No, it is, but it should be included in one of the tasks that we all have to. Okay. You give me because everyone, of course, there will be a multitude of, of responsibilities for every single person. Yeah. It's not only CTO, it's not only CEO. I can be the CEO, but the main developer for, for the project, which is tough, but, but this is how three person startups work, right? Yep, got your point. So how about HR? Is it not important? Uh, for further development, if 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 taken if taken uh, into account that I will uh, expand my 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 company, let's say for to be a corporation, I will need this division, of course. Yeah. Okay. 
So to answer back to my question as a general, there is no science behind, and this is where make the entrepreneurship really interesting. And this is so back into your strategy, how you want to build your startup. DF Automation, when we first started, our three of us, DF Automation, myself, uh, Ricky and Pingua, we are all mechatronic students. We don't have any business background, but because of the nature of the business, we need to have a different skill. So myself become a, at that time was a CEO. So I look into a mission and vision and sales and marketing. Ricky is looking into operational, looking into how to deliver the project to the customer. And the last one is a CTO, technical. He's focusing on the technical part, how to design the uh, stuff. So right after this three, we hire actually a technician and an admin. And not only until six years, then only we start to hire a cow and also HR. Okay. So this is pretty much the information. I can share with you company like, if you heard of Faith and Groupon. Yes. The founder, you know who are the next person they hire? Try to, no, no. Try to make a guess. Um, marketing? Nope. Not really. Two uh, more, two more options. Uh, <laughs> um, um, let's say, not sure. <laughs> one more option. Try one. Okay, let's say uh, if it's not marketing, then let's say HR. Yes, it is HR. Yeah. So for this founder, they are the seasonal, seasonal entrepreneur, and when they first start their business, they have like quite a big budget. And their founder, the next thing is they need to build out the team. So they they hire a very good HR talent recruitment. So, so they from decided the HR, yes. yeah, so they decided that the organization will be big from the beginning. So they yes. didn't start. Yeah, so. Well, I, I'm not saying that it's going to be big. I'm going to say that they already know they want to start from a very solid team. So that's why they need someone to handle that. And they grow slowly. Yeah. So HR will also help maintain these people. Not yeah, that will be the better retention strategy and whatnot. So basically what you're saying, doctor, is that there has to be, since it's only based on experience, so, so it's just, let's say for someone who wants to start, I just graduated though. I'm getting my, 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 my certificate in a while. Do I start going to a company and then just read, read from various sources and then just go on with it? Because if it's only based, if there's no basic science behind it, then it's experience. And if it's experience, your only way to get it is through a mentor. So I might, let me share with you. Huh? I started my business when I came back from London. Uh, that was 2010. And then I started to join all kinds of courses. I tried to ask a lecturer and student how to do business. At that time, no other lecturer are doing the business. So I, I, I started to learn how to teach. So I went to Google. Uh, I still remember this. I think in the class I shared to Malik and the, the rest, this pitching really inspired me because they pitched how the coffee cup to do a business model. And from then I learned how to do pitching. You know, I learned from YouTube and Google and, 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 and then I really learned from that perspective. Lah. So as for Ahmad, I mean, you have listened to my classes about entrepreneurship and, and right for the last one and two years in Malaysia, they push entrepreneurship so hard, you know, like they give yeah. a lot of uh, information the information that you have compared to me, those there is a lot more, right? And what is different, even to myself and you and, and the rest of your friend, it's not about the information and knowledge anymore. What is the differences now? Uh, taking step. Yes, it's all about execution. Thank you. you. Let me share with you, how much information and knowledge you want to have before you start kicking start? Just to know basic uh, organization structures, um, finance management, and let's say, uh, uh, yeah, somewhere like that, uh, attracting okay. investors. I, I mean, I, just to understand even the keywords. Yeah. Do you have something that you can recommend to me, let's say? Okay, Come on, let me share with you. I, I knew none of them before I started my business. <laughs> so my advice to you guys is really to quickly start because I was in Silicon Valley back in uh, two, three years back. One of the things that I learned from there and they actually tell, failure is part of the journey. You must go there, feel it, there only you can understand. As for Ahmad right now, I can see not only you, actually most of, uh, most of the people, they want to go to entrepreneur, they, they are very... Uh, they want to prepare themselves. They keep on reading, reading, reading. Yeah. I can tell you, after you read 10 years or so, you won't read anyone because you won't be perfect. So my, my, my advice to you is 
after today talk, go to the internet, start your business already. <laughs> That's my advice to you lah. Start as soon as possible. Even the brain brain project that you have, uh, just try to raise funds. Then you learn a bunch of a new knowledge. That was my FYP. That's why I just mentioned it off of my head. Yeah, then you just try it out. I understand it's, it's very technical. It's, <laughs> because there was it. no study of the market before doing it. So it's not aimed for the market. That's <laughs> the difference between the academic projects and... Sure, sure. Okay, uh, thanks Ahmad. Thanks for the question. I think that is a very uh, good question. So, any other question? There is one from Ibrahim. Okay. Uh, he's saying, uh, can you send the link for the... No, no one. Sorry. Oh. Ibra Ibrahim Kastan. Okay. Just... Do you mind to tell us in detail about your routine of a single day? <laughs> if you want to see my... Uh... Okay, let me share my screen a little bit. Huh? Quick one. Huh? You see my screen, yeah? Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, Malik? Yes, yes. Okay, so this is my calendar. So normally my Saturday is my family day. So today is uh, 23rd, 9 20 p.m. you have session. Then tomorrow I have another talk. Then at 4 p.m. I have another talk. Then I have RTM shooting on Tuesday. Deadline to submit leave program. Then when I say Thursday, I have other program and so on. So this is the general one. So I use uh, calendar a lot. So back into uh, this question, uh, I can share with you that I'm a uh, dad of three kids. I have one eight years old and six years old, and also a baby of eight months old. So what I do normally is when I wake up, I need to wake up at seven in the morning because I need to send my daughter to school. Came back about eight, then my another kid, uh, son, go to the school. Then eight thirty, I will start doing my stuff normally for the university and so dear formation. Until seven p.m., I will come back with my kid. So seven p.m. until ten p.m. would be my time with my kid. Normally, my kid will say at nine thirty. So that time normally is a family time. One is finished. Right, right now, from 10 p.m. on the day one and two, I will start doing my work until I get tired, then I will sleep on the next day. So that is my typical time frame for myself and my family. And uh, I work for six days. Uh, I only have one day leave, which is a Saturday. So normally Saturday, I will go somewhere. Like this Saturday, I was actually, I went to a hotel with my kid and family. So I bring them to swimming and so on and so forth. Um, I also have uh, postgrad students. I think one PhD, two must three master, and a few. Every Sunday, uh, two p.m. Every two weeks, I will meet them, and, and they need to do research, write paper, and so on. So from here, I just want to share that although you have a lot of uh, different tasks, business. I have three company now: the Automation, Tech Innovation, and Insight. Uh, and at this same time, also I have a lot of uh, media. Uh, interview like next Tuesday I have RTM. Last week was from Astro. So you just need to really manage your time properly, then you can do a lot more things. Uh. I think for Malik also tried to set up the time with me for quite some time already. Finally, we get this time uh, nicely. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I hope I answer your question on that. Uh, this is another yes, sir. Ask a question. May I know how to share idea? And how to go in with this type of company? Do you support student idea? Thanks. Yes, sir. If you can unmute yourself, engineering, yes, sir. It's not here. Okay, anyone else? Later, maybe I'll answer that. I don't know how to share idea and how to go in. So I can't really understand your question. Uh, I think it. it First, we start with a problem statement. Back to the idea from a company point of view, they don't really care too much on the idea per se. They are looking into more how your idea can solve their problem. They are focusing on that. And I give you one example. Let's say in this company, they have a problem of flipping the PCB. You know? And then you come up with a good idea, say that I'm going to use uh, one industrial robot with a very innovative gripper to push and push and push with about $100,000. Okay, and the other one is a very simple XY robot to do a flipping, and you know, cost at fifty thousand ringgit Malaysia. Okay, and then we want the fifty thousand ringgit Malaysia without the very advanced robotic solution. So back again, you need to focus on more 
on the problem, the need that I have, and come up with a solution that solve that problem. It's not about the technology. It's not about how good is your AI, how good is your deep learning. If you say that, just now I think uh, Ahmad mentioned, yeah, my solution is a deep learning with all kind of uh, AI and so on. I'm going to ask you, did you solve my problem? If you say 95%, I say that brilliant. Then why other people are not using it? So again, most of the business are very, very strict to the point. If people want to pay you money, it's all about solving the problem. Remember, you create a solution that solves the problem that actually worth a value for them. Okay. Um, any new Malik, anything else? Uh, any more questions, guys? Ibrahim, just I, did I answer your question? Is it what you want to know? Ibrahim, Katan? No, Ibrahim is not there already. <laughs> I think no more questions. Thank you, Doctor. So, okay, if there's no question, maybe I just uh, give some uh, concluding remark. Uh. Okay, Malik? Okay, okay, sure. Okay, um, uh, why I'm doing this, I think, for Malik and the class that actually in my class. Um, I push a lot of entrepreneurship, even though like Ahmad, I was in robotics, I thought about entrepreneurship as well. Because not only in Malaysia, in all countries, including yours in Egypt, Yemen, Iraq, and so on, SME is the one that actually brings the economy of the country. And we need a lot of more of this uh, SME. And how to create this more SME is not that me as a lecturer ask you to open up, because you won't. The one that making you open up because you have a lecturer or you have a friend that open a business, it create a culture ecosystem. And when you go back there, if you start your business then, and you go back to your home country and people look at you, they say, hey, my friend also can open a business, then start to open a business. And I think that is very, very important. So that's number one. Number two, back into just now some of your gentlemen asked, is there a science to create a team and so on? There's none. I can share with you for DF Automation for the last eight years, as for now, I'm still trying to get a marketing executive and I still cannot get the right one. And I still I cannot get the right one, I still need to do the marketing uh, so-called activity myself. And uh, if business are so easy to do, a lot of people already done the business. But of course, of these challenges, the reward is there, the gain is there as well. And of course, it make the entrepreneurship journey is very, very interesting. Yeah. The fourth point that I want to share is to do pitching. You follow the four step just now I did mention, if you still remember, NABC, which is the need, approach, benefit per cost, and competition. So when present to the investor, they know that you're doing your homework and they will invest and they will partner with you uh, accordingly. And finally, this is also a reason COVID-19 and I, I managed to have a conversation with uh, the Minister of Technology of Malaysia and other countries as well. The three big industries moving forward will be number one is really into healthcare. If you have any idea towards healthcare, this is the, I would say, booming time for the next, I would say, two or three years. The next one is really automation in manufacturing. Because of the COVID-19, a lot of people, MCO, cannot go to the work and they think of how to automate this. When you are stuck at home, you still use phone, you still use your television, you still use a lot of a consumer product, you still need to manufacture this product. If you don't have an operator to do the job, who else? So this is where the robotic automation, even big data AI prediction going to be very, very valuable. So I did mention it's not the three industry important, healthcare, Second is a manufacturing, automation manufacturing or robotic automation manufacturing. The third one is really agriculture. Why agriculture? Again, during MCO, the movement control recession, not only in Malaysia, the whole country, people still need it, man. The farmer cannot go out to do farm. Even they have a farm, they don't have a people to actually do and do harvesting and so on. So right now, even at this moment, I'm talking to you just today, a day before the government come and ask, 
Young, do you have a solution to do farming? Do you have a solution to do harvesting, to pick up the vegetable, to do put the so-called, uh, uh, what do you call baja? I, can't, I don't know. I mean to fertilize the, the, the soil. So agriculture is the next big thing because we still need to eat and we still need to automate this direction. So if you have any business related to that, it will be very, very helpful as long as to reduce the dependency of human. It can be same thing, automation, robotic, AI perspective, even a smart uh, farm, even indoor uh, farm and so on and so forth you can think of. Okay, so that will be the five item conclusion that I want to share to conclude my uh, conversation. And once again, thank you very much to Malik to organize the event and it's really nice to chat with you. And I hope some of you really can uh, open a business and to be very, very successful and keep inspiring other people. Thank you very much. Thank you a lot, Doctor, for this amazing session and the, the, the important information that I've shared. And actually, the, the reason that I, in, I insisted to have this session is because the last semester that we took the program, it was great. We have learned a lot. <laughs> so I, I insisted to, uh, to have this workshop. Thank you a lot, Doctor. And uh, I hope all the participants get the, get the idea. And thank you all for participating and have a good night. Anything, anyone want to say anything? I think that's all. Thank you, Dr. Allah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye and good night. Thank you.